Uh, Dr. Africa, how would you start that if I were to ask you to take us back to where we came from, where we used to be, and even where you think we're headed? Is, is it as grim as I think it may be? Is the past as wonderful for us health-wise as, as I, most of us think it may have been? Where would we be? Where have we been? Well, the examination of the uh, mummies indicated we were 99% cavity-free. Even when we were 70, 80, and 90 years old, we were cavity free. So the examination of the mummies itself indicates that we were healthy people and they found sprouting containers in the pyramids and the, the herbal formulas, over 300 different herbal formulas taken out of Tutankhamun's coffin, as they call it, his, uh, when excavated his grave. <laughs> had this, not only the, the herbal combination, but the schedule of how to take it what you call prescriptions today, was taken out of his uh, remains. So we have the evidence that we were very healthy, knew about herbal medicine. We had herbal farms, which the Europeans call orchards. And I found out the people in control of it, Tet and other people, and how they designed the orchards to indicate certain energy fields, which people call feng shui today. So that got me into how to arrange the house using an African system based on our herbal system. So we were very healthy until we were introduced to what we call a starch and fats in our diet. Well, I'm going to stop you a minute now. Before we started the starch and fats in our diet, what did we eat? We ate whole foods, which mm -hmm. people call natural foods, which mm -hmm. does not include dairy products or salt or white sugar or any processed grains, which people call bleached white flour today and white rice today. We ate whole, whole foods, yes, mm -hmm. mostly raw. Those in the seed family and grains ripen early where sweet fruits ripen late. So we, what people buy in the store is unripe grains, which they call rice and beans, but they're unripe. So you have to kind of cook them to got that, revert that sugar back to its sure. natural state. But that's what we were eating. And that's been verified over and over again by just going to the pyramids. And they have paintings of what we ate in the pyramids and in the papyrus and coffin texts. They mention exactly what we eat and had paintings of it. We were doing correct food combining not putting starch with meat, which mm -hmm. is illogical and hampers your digestion, causes constipation and gas, which people call farting or something like that. Mm -hmm. So we weren't combining food incorrectly. Mm -hmm. We were on point now at one time. Right. But then we had this incursion with another people's diet, which was the starch and fat centered diet, which we were put on during colonialism and slavery. And that's when everything started turning around. That's when we got into prolapsed uterus. That's when we got into fibroid tumors. That's when we got into infertility with that starch centered diet. Right. And, and that also leads me to this part, too. When we think about um, slavery uh -huh. and we think about how we were served or how what we could gather were the leftovers, mm -hmm. all of that wasn't bad. But a great part of it was, particularly when you think about certain meats. Can you explain a little bit about that? Like when you think about things like chitterlings and, uh -huh. and, and other uh, body parts of animals that we ate because we couldn't get into the big house to eat other foods. Uh-huh. Well, you have to understand that uh, people were just doing the best they could to survive. Right. Now, I'm not faulting our ancestors. They were surviving at that time. But they knew how to supplement their diet with fibrous food. They were using slipper elm bark, maple leaves. They were using raw herbs and barks of trees to get the fiber into this diet, which we weren't, we weren't doing today. But they knew how to, some kind of way, make this diet more palatable. Sure. So they were eating the insides of the animals because uh, in that system, the Greek system of eating, they believe you eat muscle, you gain muscle. So they won't eat in the muscle of the animal and they were leaving the innards, the guts, and the place where they store the bowel movement, the rectum of the pig, which people call chitlins or something for us to eat, the feet, mm -hmm. the ears, the eyes, all that, the tail and all that. But that's based on the religious system of how to eat meat and how to prepare it coming out of the Greeks. 